We all want to be rich. We're taught from a young age that money is this ultimate measure of success, but we don't often hear how to actually get rich. In this video, I'm going to share with you the five millionaire habits that changed my life and made me more productive, happier, and gave me more financial freedom. Now, you don't have to be born with a silver spoon in your mouth to become a millionaire. In fact, 82% of millionaires didn't inherit their wealth. They came from modest backgrounds just like us. Growing up without rich parents didn't stop them, so it shouldn't stop you either. They made their money through sheer dedication and adoption of some of these tried and tested habits. Because for as long as civilization has been around, there have been successful people. People who shifted their mentality in order to achieve their dreams and goals. I know you're probably thinking you've heard it all before. Read more books, journal every day, eat healthy, focus on solutions. That's why I'm not going to mention the obvious ones. So in this video, I'm going to take a look at five of the most actionable examples, my favorite ideas which have personally turned my business around and helped me grow from making zero dollars last year in January to now making more than I made as a corporate lawyer, especially the last tip which has immensely helped my overall mindset. Also, I've timestamped each tip, so if there's any bits of the video that you'd like to skip, then don't worry, it's all right there in the description. Habit number one, is simplifying as much as you can about your life. There's this concept called decision fatigue, which is when you have so many decisions to make that eventually your brain gets tired and your ability to make the right decisions starts declining. Because of this, maybe you start making bad decisions like impulse purchases. I found that the more I stopped wasting my mental energy on decisions that ultimately didn't matter, the more space I had to make clear decisions where they did matter. I used to care about what I wore and every morning I'd have to spend time thinking about what to wear. Now, I've stopped worrying about what I wear. It takes me two minutes to get dressed in the morning because I've eliminated the choices. For my YouTube videos, since the very first video, I've rotated the same five or six white shirts. That way, I never have to worry about what to wear when I'm filming. I just pick one of the white shirts and I'm ready to go. Mark Zuckerberg wears the same gray shirt every day and once said, I really want to clear my life to make it so that I have to make as few decisions as possible about anything except how to best serve this community. Steve Jobs also famously wore the same outfit every day. He allegedly had over a hundred black turtlenecks in his closet. I've just found that when I take away the stress of making decisions that are ultimately trivial, I have more energy left to focus on what matters. The less complicated I made life, the more productive I became. There's a quote by James Clear that I really like that goes, it's only by making the fundamentals of life easier that you can create the mental space needed for free thinking and creativity. And I thought that was a really good way to put it. Habit number two is putting a value on how much your time is worth and outsourcing anything that you can outsource for less than that number. When I was younger, I didn't understand this concept. I grew up being really frugal and so even as an adult, I had this do-it-yourself mentality where I'd rather spend an entire day doing something than spend $20 to have someone else do it. But a few years back, I decided that if I was going to accomplish everything I wanted to accomplish, I needed to value my time. My mindset now is that if I value my time at let's say $15 an hour, then anything I can get someone else to do for less than that is worth it. Some of the things I've outsourced are social media posts for my legal tech company, blog posts, and even things in my personal life like doing laundry. Just because I can do all of these things myself doesn't mean that I should. It's really easy to spend hours of our day doing things that we don't enjoy or want to do or that we aren't particularly good at. I'm not particularly good at graphics, so me spending hours of my day trying to make mediocre social media posts isn't the most efficient use of my time when an expert can do the same thing better in an hour. And this way, I free up my time to do things that only I can do, like filming this YouTube video. Habit number three, not being afraid of failure. Take the story of Thomas Edison. Edison's teachers said that he was too stupid to learn anything. He was fired from his first two jobs for being non-productive, but that didn't put him down. He kept going in spite of no one believing in him. 
If he didn't, the world would literally be a darker place. A reporter at the time even asked him, how did it feel to fail a thousand times? Edison replied, I didn't fail a thousand times. The light bulb was an invention with a thousand steps. Most millionaires that I know didn't take the traditional route of school, university, to nine to five. They take calculated risks, usually at a time when they have fewer responsibilities. When you're young, you have less overhead, no house, no kids. It's really a golden opportunity if you can to take a calculated risk and go all in on your business or whatever you're passionate about and want to actually do with your life. I was on this very traditional path. I went to college, then law school, then a law firm, and I realized that it wasn't the life that I wanted for myself. I wanted a life where my time was my own. I didn't want a boss having control over my time. So I took that risk to quit the law firm to start my own business, and I figured that the worst case scenario is that I would just have to go back to the traditional work route if I ran out of savings. And it was the scariest decision I've ever made in my life, but it turned out to be the best decision ever. It completely changed my life. And speaking of calculated risks and not being afraid to fail, if you're in a similar situation and maybe you're tired of having a boss or working long hours, or you know that what you're currently doing isn't really fulfilling and is just a paycheck, the next step's going to be really important. It sounds a bit counterintuitive, but this millionaire habit is being frugal with your money. It's simple math. The less you spend, the more you have. The more you can save, the more you're going to be able to take those calculated risks because you have savings to back you up. You're not living paycheck to paycheck. And the best way to preserve your savings is by being frugal. The world we live in teaches us the keeping up with the Joneses mentality. That's why we don't want to have the smallest house in the neighborhood or the oldest car out of your friends, even though those are the financially savvy things to have. But if you keep leveling up your lifestyle, then you're never going to save money. Restaurants are a great example of this. You can either eat at home and cook your own food for free, or you could spend $15 on dinner that night with friends. Then the next day you're waking up late and rushing to work. You have to buy breakfast and lunch now. Then before you realize it, you spent around $50. Do this once a week and that's $200 a month and $2,400 a year. We see these things as necessary expenditures, but are they really? This is where frugality becomes a virtue. Doing what you need with just enough to get by and not spending more than you have makes a lot of sense. It's about having less of everything, whether it's clothing, shoes, or even furniture. It's about being content with what you have and not always just wanting more. But don't let frugality fool you. That doesn't mean that we should be miserable. Frugal living is just a way of life that can lead to increased savings in the long run. It's fine to splash out once in a while and upgrade your laptop or buy that new outfit. But in general, the more frugal you can be, the faster you're going to get to a financial place where you can take these calculated risks, like starting your own business. And being frugal can be as simple as taking public transportation instead of driving to work every day. There are plenty of ways to save money without feeling deprived or being uncomfortable with your lifestyle choices. Take Warren Buffett, for example. Some say he's the most successful investor of all time and he lives in the same Nebraska home that he bought for $31,500 40 years ago. And his frugal living doesn't stop there. In fact, CNBC reported that he only spends $3.89 on breakfast when he's feeling rich. On a bad day, he spends $2.38. Just think, this man has enough wealth to hire Gordon Ramsay to cook his breakfast every single day, but he still chooses your basic diner with a glass of Coke. Buffett also doesn't buy expensive suits. He only wears suits tailored by a Chinese entrepreneur named Madame Lee who charges $250 for a suit. This is something that I've applied to my life. When I started working at this big law firm as a corporate lawyer, everyone around me was upgrading their life and buying the fanciest clothing and everything, but I chose to wear the same clothes that I had, shop at the same cheap places, and eat at home when I could because I wanted to get out of student loan debt and I wanted to stay frugal so that I could pay off that debt and have more freedom in my life. Habit number five is surrounding yourself with people who inspire you. In the words of motivational speaker Jim Rohn, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. It's important to make sure that these five people are really inspiring. 
Take any film or TV show or book about someone rising up the ranks of success. They usually start at rock bottom, surrounded by friends who all think alike with no ambition at all. Then something happens, a mentor comes telling them that they need to do something. In The Lord of the Rings, this is Gandalf. In Harry Potter, it's Hagrid. In The Queen's Gambit, it's the caretaker who teaches her how to play chess. This mentor sees potential in the hero and helps them to escape from their current everyday life. Then there's a refusal to the call where this hero isn't ready to start the adventure or their friends are holding them back until the inevitable realization occurs and the hero begins their adventure. This is true outside of fiction as well. We might not all have this five foot six inch tall wizard knocking on our door, forcing us to start a business but we can surround ourselves with people who motivate us, people who we look up to and respect. In this book I read called Free to Focus, he mentions a study conducted by Dylan Miner, a professor who actually analyzed how other team members affect each other's performance. He found that for coworkers who sat within a 25 foot radius of high performers, their performance rose 15%. But he also found the reverse effects. If you sat near low performers, that would double the impact, but in the wrong direction, essentially bringing you down twice as much. And this rolls over into your personal life as well. Your friends, family, coworkers, customers, colleagues, they all influence your energy management. Some of them charge you up and some drain your batteries. Henry Cloud in his book, The Power of Other, suggests that people should conduct a social audit. You should start surrounding yourself with people who charge your energy, not drain it. Even if your circumstances force you to interact with negative people, you have to understand that their energy might be bringing you down. And I'm not suggesting that you go hide away in a cave someplace and cut everyone negative out of your life. But you can just slowly start separating yourself from people who you realize are bringing you down and actively spend more time with those who inspire you. This tip personally helped me out a lot because when I was working in the law firm, I noticed that everyone thought they'd made it. They'd reached this last level in the game of life. So when I told them I was going to quit to start a business, they couldn't fathom it. Why would you quit being a lawyer at this top law firm, right? Even though they were smart people, I saw that they weren't happy at the job, but they also had no desire to leave, which always just baffled me. And I felt like the longer I surrounded myself with them, the greater chance that I would become too risk averse to try anything different. Once I quit and started growing my online business and this channel, I began to meet entrepreneurs and YouTubers and other like-minded people, people who were genuinely happy with their lives and were having an impact on people. And I was inspired to follow their path. It made me feel so much more confident in my decision to leave this law firm because I could envision my future through their success. Okay, so those are some of my favorite nuggets of advice from millionaires. I discussed how you can simplify your life and make fewer decisions about the trivial things to open yourself up to the more important decisions. I mentioned how you need to value your time. If you can outsource menial tasks, then start doing it as soon as possible. And don't be afraid of failure. You're always going to regret it if you don't try. And also, being frugal with your money. Just because you can buy new things doesn't mean you should. And lastly, surround yourself with people who inspire you. People who bring you up and make you want to succeed and cheer you on because those are the people you need in your life. I hope you found this video helpful. If you want two free stocks, one valued at up to $1,600, then you can sign up for Weeble using my link in the description below to get those two free stocks. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.